Hello, I'm Philip Cameron. Welcome to today's Daily Faith. We are going to be sharing some incredible news with you during this program. And I'm going to be giving a word from the Lord for you to build an ark for the saving of your family. We're so glad that you could join us. Why don't you get yourself a wee cup of tea and join us, will you? This is Daily Faith. The Bible says that Noah built an ark to save his family. He was warned of God, the Bible said, of things not seen as yet. Up until the time Noah built an ark, rain had never fallen from the sky. Dew came up from the ground and watered the ark. So God spoke to Noah and said, I'm going to make it rain. And Noah says, what, what's rain? He says, well, water's going to fall out of the sky, and there's going to be so much water falling out of the sky that all the ground's going to disappear. And everything that isn't in an ark, what's an ark? Well, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you how to do that later on. But unless you, everything's going to drown unless they're in that ark. And the Bible says that Noah, moved by fear, built an ark for the saving of his family. We get caught up with the two by twos and the seven by sevens and all the animals. That is not why Noah built an ark. That is not what made him spend over a hundred years being mocked by everyone in his world. The thing that made him build the ark was that he had kids and he wanted his family saved. You think of Noah for a moment. I've done lots of buildings in my life, and you go and you put in the foundation, and then you put in the studs for the walls, and all the wiring goes in. And I've had to go back and try to figure out what we did in a part of a building, and it's a year's passed, or two years have passed, or even longer. And for the life of me, I couldn't remember what went there, and how we did this, and how that fit back in there, and, and, and we did kind of start all over again. Can you imagine over a hundred years had passed since Noah laid the keel of this largest thing ever created on, on the earth up to this moment? This incredible structure that he'd built, and he laid the keel out, and then the ribs of the boat, and then and began to wrap it with, with planks, and then the bitumen inside and out. He's, every day of his life, he spent building that ark. The floods came. A century and more of people mocking him. Sunday afternoon, let's go out and see what the old fool's doing. He's up on the scaffold and that thing he's building is getting bigger all the time and he tells us that water's going to fall on top of us. What a fool. Let me tell you something. The fools of today are very often the heroes of tomorrow. And as he built the ark, he would turn around and speak to the people and say, please, there's a storm coming. There's a flood coming. The world's going to be covered with water. Will you please come get in the ark with me? And the Bible says there came a point when God said it was time, and the Bible says that God shut the door. Read the scripture, and he said, come into the ark with me. Where was God? God was in the ark. Come into the ark. Come into the ark. And that huge door that he'd built in place suddenly moved and began to close. And the moment the first drop of rain fell on the earth, Noah became the wisest man in the world. The Bible says, he who winneth souls is wise. And the harvest field that God has put you in charge of the place where you are meant to be is your home and your family. God anointed me. The one anointing that I know I have been given in my life is to believe God for people, for their kids and their family members to get saved. 
I spoke one time in a television program up in Huntley Street in Canada, and three million names of unsaved loved ones were sent in for salvation. Thousands got saved. I want to challenge you right now and ask you a question. As Noah was in, in his ark when the, the floods came and the water, can you imagine that massive ship beginning to creak and the support beams falling off and suddenly he realizes he's floating free through the, door, through the walls of the ark. He can hear scream, screaming people trying to claw their way into the boat, but it's too late. Where do you think Noah was as the ark began to float? I know where he was. I'm certain I know where he was. He wasn't up top. He was down below, checking out work that he'd done a hundred years before, making sure that all the planks of the ark were in place. And the challenge I have for you today is to make sure that all the planks are in place. When the storm comes, if you've, cut a, if you've had a shortcut and you haven't secured things in your life, if you haven't put in place the right parts, if everything isn't tight and ready for a storm, I promise you, the first wave, you're going to be in trouble and so is your family. And I challenge you today to make sure that all your planks are in place. We're building an ark, just like, just like Noah. We, you and I, are building an ark. And this song's been ringing in my heart over and over again. Come into the ark. Listen to this. Make sure your, your, your planks are in place. Come in to the ark Ere the stars go dark And there's a storm called God's great judgment day From its fierce, angry ways In the ark you be saved Come in to the ark today Let me sing it again for you and as I sing it, think about your kids and the planks you're putting in place, making sure that your security of your family when the storm comes, they're safe and secure. Listen to this. Come in to the ark Ere the skies grow dark And there's a storm called God's grace judgment day from its fierce angry waves in the ark all your family will be saved that's the word of the Lord to you come in to the ark today I want to believe God with you for your family. I want to help you build an ark for the saving of your house. I believe that God's plan is that not one of your loved ones perish. And the purpose of this program and me sitting here with you and sharing these truths is to encourage you to understand that it's for you and for your family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's a lamb for a household. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. All of those are the express desire and purpose of God. And he wants you to stand up today for your family and say, I claim it in the name of Jesus. I wrote a book entitled Full House. It's from the story of Rahab the harlot. A harlot protected two spies. And they says, whatever you want, we'll give you. And she said, save my family. And when the Israelites came back to Jericho and marched around the walls, and the walls fell flat, all the walls did not fall flat. Rahab's house was in the wall, and our family was in the house. A pagan prostitute stood up and saved our family. And I'm going to believe God with you. So this book... I want you to get it today. It's, it is a handbook for household salvation. 
Watch this. Full House. It's time for household salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. I want you to get this book today. It is a handbook. Now listen to me on helping you build an ark for to save your family. You've got loved ones that you are God's contact man, God's contact person to see saved. You have no idea the power you have to look at the, the, the powers of darkness and say, my inheritance is household salvation. And when you resist the devil, he will flee from you. So listen, Full House is a book you need to have in your hands. And um, order it today. You can get it. It'll be addresses at the end of the program. And uh, that is going to be a great blessing for you. Now listen, I've got something to share with you that will absolutely bless your heart. We do mission works. Our, our real heart as a family, for the last 30 years, 30 years ago, I adopted a baby in an orphanage in Romania. He's now a grown man called Andrew. You may know him and see him on, on, if we were in church or television. And that wee baby, when I found him, could hardly walk. He was three years of age in a, in a metal rusty crib, painted with lead paint, and a horsehair mattress that had no sheets. And it was covered in his own waist. He was covered in his own waist. He was so sick he could hardly walk. And I picked him up and I made a promise to him that I would come back and do my utmost to save him. And I did. The next year I was back and miraculously in three weeks we were able to adopt him. And that set me and my whole family on a mission, on a departure in a direction that I never thought of, never considered, didn't even understand. I kept going back. They had no toilets. They sat on coffee cans that were open with the old-fashioned can opener, and all their bottoms were cut as they sat on these tins. They had, there was no flush toilets. The, the, the beds, as I said, were painted with, with lead paint. And we, so we replaced. I, would go, I, went, I said to Chrissy, I'll go back one more time, and I'll fix the beds. And then I went back, I'll, I'll go back one more time and fix the toilets. And then the, the roof was, I'll, I'll go back and I'll fix the, 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 the roof. And I literally fell into the slippery slope of loving orphans that had no one else to care for them. We then went to Moldova and found a horrendous situation. When a girl turns 16, she's put on the street and she's lost forever. Traffickers come and get them offer them bogus jobs in Italy or Germany or wherever, and they end up being sold 30 to 50 times a day. And our family has spent the last 20 years helping these kids be spared from hell itself. And my daughter Melody is with me. Her, uh, she's just come back from Moldova. And the, and the newest challenge we have is something that just burns in my heart night and day. Can you imagine having the possibility of buying a village, which we've done, we're in the process of paying it off right now, buying a village with six houses that can save up to 90 more kids, that we can reach 90 more kids with the gospel, fill them with faith, give them a purpose in life, educate them, and the miracle is that these orphans end up becoming missionaries. And I want you to watch this video right now and see what Vatra Village is all about. And I believe that God's going to inspire you to be a part of it. Watch this video.
Moldova is a nation in a desperate place, torn between the East and the West, stuck between yesterday and tomorrow. It has the highest alcoholism rate in the world and has been voted the unhappiest place on earth. Poverty and alcohol is a deadly mix. It breaks the home. It causes unimaginable suffering. It creates orphans. Children are abandoned as their parents go abroad to find work. Often, they never come back, and children become another statistic in a land of loss. From the orphanage or poverty-stricken village, it is a short step to the arms of the trafficker and a life of unspeakable hell. Standing on street corners anywhere in the world, being sold as much as 30 to 50 times a day. Once a girl is broken, she won't fight back. Lost into a world of shame, pain, drugs and violence. Each girl can earn their captor $300,000 a year. Trafficking is more profitable than drugs. Yet, in the midst of all this sorrow, a miracle is taking place. Orphans are finding hope through the work of the orphans' hands. They are finding their broken hearts healed by God's love, and hope is turning into action. These amazing kids, once redeemed, have an unstoppable desire to help those who have been left behind. They have become missionaries to those who are what they once were. We are growing. We desperately need more space. We have been praying and God has given an answer. Vatra Village. Six homes that will hold 90 kids. Vatra means hearth, a place of warmth and comfort, something most of these kids have never known. These beautiful homes are not yet complete, but by God's grace, they will be the hearth in the heart of many kids who today are alone. In these rooms, care and love, hope and healing will transform pain into purpose and loss into life. Standing a few hundred feet from Moldova's largest lake, Vatra was sold for over $1 million just a few years ago. Today, it has been offered to the orphan's hands for the miraculous price of $600,000. The owners know what we do. They want us to help the youth of their nation. Just think, for what two captured girls earn in the hell of trafficking, we can buy Vatra Village, a place of hope to save countless lives. Will you help us to save these broken lives from cold street corners and offer them a hearth, a home? Thank you. Vatra Village, a place, an ark of safety. We are so close to having this finished. As you see, the houses are, some of the houses are completely finished, but some are still to be finished off and rebuilt. What happened was, th these houses originally were made for very wealthy people to have a, a lake home. And the government poisoned the lake, and the, the, the development was never finished. But it was made for rich people. And all upstairs, when we, when we bought the place, there was no insulation, so we tear down all the upstairs ceilings and insulate the place and rewire the place. It's been a tremendous challenge of faith, but we are so close to opening this village and allowing 90 more kids to be rescued from the hand of the trafficker. If I could take you there, we, as we sp speak right now, we are $140,000 away from paying the buildings off, $140,000. If I could take you there and stand you in the middle of that village and say to you, 90 kids' lives can be transformed, and then 90 more, and then 90 more, and then 90 more, and then 90 more. 
And if I would say to you, we could buy this whole village for a thousand dollar gift. Most of you would say, I'll find that. I can believe God for that. I can make this dream come true for a thousand dollars. That's exactly what I'm saying. If we can find 140 people that will believe God with us for a thousand dollars, Vatra Village will be paid for and we'll be able to continue to finish the houses and open them for the kingdom of God. I've had to turn away young folk. One particular time we had put windows in the largest orphanage, 391 windows in the largest orphanage in the country of Moldova. When we finished, the director took me outside and there was a park bench and 18 girls were standing or sitting on, around the park bench. And he said, they all must leave. And I said, what do you mean? He says, they're finished. And I looked at my wife, Chrissy, and I said, what can we do? And I, I'll never forget the blood draining from our face when the enormity of what just had happened and we were now responsible for 18 girls. And I said, how many beds can we put in the house we've just finished? And she looked at me. I can hear and, and sense the tone of her voice. She said to me, we can only take three more if we empty the computer room. And I said, three? And we're standing, and the girls are right beside me, looking at us like puppies in a, in a pet shop. Please take me, take me. And I said, Chrissy, please tell me we can take more than three. And she said, it's all we can take. And I turned around to look at these girls and chose three. There was one girl on the back left corner. Her name, we now know her name is Valentina. And she left that particular day and went home to her mother. And she says, please let me come back. And the mother says, there's no place in this house for you. And Valentina was trafficked. First to Greece, then to Crete and then to Russia, uh, to China rather. And we found her through Russian Facebook in China. And we asked, how bad is it? And she wouldn't, we, in fact, we, we tried to rescue her and she says, I'm too far gone, I can't, I can't make it. And we said, what's the worst thing that's happened to you? And she says, well, two Christmases ago, they took me to this big event and 95 men used me in one day. 95 men. And the only thing I lacked that day was a bed, a place for Valentina to come and be safe. You can help us today. Melody, you've been there. You've watched the agony of turning kids away. Try and explain as a, as a mom and as a woman how close these kids come every time they leave that orphanage. Yeah, I, to have someone's life in your hands and with all the will of the world, you want to be able to help them, but, but you can't. Yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking. And the, Vatra, these houses, it's an art. It's an arc of safety. It's an arc of love. It's an arc of hope for girls who have nowhere to go. These girls don't have moms at home praying for them and uh, helping them every, every step of the way. Nobody's interested in their, their life or where they're gonna be and where we're gonna go. So for us, we're there. We're there waiting and, and trying to build a, a home and a house for them to come and stay. And so we have the opportunity. We can be the ones to say, I believe in this, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you, I'm, I'm gonna make this possible. As you're praying for your, your loved ones, your son or your daughter, or your husband, uh, your, your, either even your own parents, say this is something that I can do tangibly. I can, I'm still gonna continue to believe for my family, but in the meantime, I'm gonna change somebody else's life. I'm gonna bring salvation to these young men and women. Because when they come through those doors, 
We've had dozens of dozens and dozens of kids come through the doors. And it, there's just something about those physical needs being met, the love of a family, um, that just creates a, an atmosphere for them to experience the love of Jesus Christ. And so Vatra is an incredible opportunity for us. You have... To bring so many to know Jesus Christ. This, uh, this is one of those moments when we can join our hands together and change someone's life forever. Whatever you can give to help us finish Vatra, whatever it is, whether it's $1,000 or whether it's 10 don't sit by and watch these young lives be lost forever. Be a part of this miracle. Yes. You are so important. Your gift of a dollar a day changes lives. You can become part of a monthly supporter of the ministry. But why don't you help us right now finish Vatra Village to the glory of God. We love you so much. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons, and in the process, Orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833-DAILY-FAITH. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. Daily Faith with Philip Cameron, The Orphan's Hands, reserves the right to direct allocated funds to the greatest need.